Hello everyone, I am Fair Moore and this is what's happening in your Courier Buzz. College of DuPage leaders remain optimistic about how the institution is weathering the national downward enrollment trend, reporting fall 2022 headcount gains of 5.3% over 2021's figures. The college's full-time equivalent enrollment is up 1.1%, surpassing earlier forecasts of a 3% decrease only a few months ago. In May, the National Student Clearinghouse Research Center reported that undergraduate enrollment declines appear to be worsening with spring 2022 figures down 4.7% from the prior year. Among public institutions, community colleges accounted for more than half of that loss. Registration remains open for fall eight-week sessions, which begins Monday, October 17th. For more information, visit cod.edu backslash registration. Lacrosse is coming to the College of DuPage. Women lacrosse teams tryouts will be held Friday, October 7th at 4 p.m. on the COD soccer fields. Coach Gary Cope is excited to begin the offseason with the women's team this fall. He's hoping to run home with the championship this upcoming season. My expectations of, of the players are pretty simple. Um, empty, I always say it's called empty out the tank. 110%. I want my players to be able to look at themselves after every game and say, hey, I gave everything I can. With the opening season beginning in spring 2023, Coach Cope hopes for a very good first season. This team will be, without a doubt, given 110%. They will know any college that plays us will know that they played us. The COD's men's soccer team is sitting on a 5-7 and seven record so far but hope to finish the season strong heading into the NJCAA Region 4 tournament. Jose Mercado tells us more about this year's team. Our CHAP soccer team redeems themselves after another fantastic performance against Milwaukee Area Technical College this past Thursday. It was a great win. I mean, obviously we came off a pair of losses, so we were looking forward to coming in this game to get a big result, and that's exactly what we did. I mean, it was a great feeling. Obviously, i got to give credit to my defense. Uh, they played a big part in that, and uh, moving forward, uh, hopefully we can keep that same result, keep that same intensity in the back line, and then push it forward, which is going to lead to us making more plays in the, in the final thirds. We only have four more games, and team spirit is at an all-time high. Uh, I thought we dominated uh, from start to finish. Kept it in their half, and we had a lot of shots. I thought we did our game well. Uh, definitely uh, the Harper game is going to be a good game. It's towards the end of the season. It's the playoff game. So that one should be good. With our 4-0 victory, it diminishes our losing streak and places one win and counting closer to the playoffs. Not bad. Uh, last minute goal, so every goal is a good goal. It was a good game. We won 2-0 in both halves. It was good to get a win after a couple of losses on the bounce. If we earn ourselves another win against the Hawks of Harper College this Saturday, but we will also redeem ourselves and even out our win-loss ratio against this rivalry. Uh, I think it was a good game. We showed that we have patience waiting for our chances. We were focused in defense, and I think we proved that we are the team who can compete for playoffs this year. To keep it up with uh, focus, be focused in defense and you know, just take our chances. I mean, it's a great feeling every time, you know. So that's it. I'm looking forward to score next game too. We'd only need three more games to win our conference to make this playoffs this season. Depending on the outcome of this game, a win against Carl Sandburg College would almost surely put us in the playoffs. I, I'd probably say Joe getting a bicycle kick goal, um, just because it's, it's always fun to score that way, but, but really worked hard and got himself in the right spot and was able to finish it in a kind of a difficult scenario you know I think that we we were consistent for the most part and we we played um, well throughout and, and consistently and put the pressure on them and so you know we weren't rattled and we were able to control the game the whole time I like us to have finished better um, we got like 40 shots but only scored four goals so um, I mean uh, their goalkeeper played well but it'd be good to for us to have really kind of had more efficiency there in terms of finishing and scoring a few more Four more games that will count toward our playoff standing, so those ones, you know, are uh, always exciting. And maybe we have Illinois Valley next week, which is going to be a, a challenge. And so really kind of just take it an opponent at a time, so that's really the one we're looking forward to most now. I think really kind of the, kind of the style that we try to attack and, and play creatively and fun. And I think 
were fun to watch. We'd only need three more games to win our conference to make this playoffs this season. Depending on the outcome of this game, a win against Carl Sandburg College would almost surely put us in the playoffs. For Courier Buzz, I'm Jose Mercado. From underdogs to wedded dogs, CJ Rosenstein tells us about an event that attempted to break a record with puppy love. <laughs> The Kane County Cougars are hosting Diamonds in the Rough, trying to break a Guinness World Record for largest dog wedding ceremony and save the lives of rescue dogs and U.S. veterans in the process. The newlyweds will be raising much needed funds for Canines for Warriors. From forever couples to U.S. heroes, this event has all the fun. So half of the money raised today is going to go towards Canines for Warriors and what they do with that money is that is used to help train dogs who are rescue dogs and those dogs then become matched with a military veteran and that doesn't happen overnight and what studies have shown is that that helps their mental health helps them assimilate back into society and reduces the number of suicides quite frankly so this is an event that saves lives in that way oh my gosh this is a really cool attempt the largest dog wedding ceremony how can it be more fun this is incredible adjudicators must follow a precise rule set to determine whether a record has been broken I have to work with the organizers of this attempt on a very certain set of guidelines and we have to make sure that we follow every single word in the guidelines because the people that attempted this before, the current record holders, they also have to follow a very similar set of guidelines as well. While our fluffy friends prepare to meet their forever partners, one good boy prepares to give the paw print of approval. Henry's actually an ordained minister, and so Henry's going to be officiating um, the ceremony today. For me personally, I really think that whole, you know, that all the money goes to Canines for Warriors, um, which is just an amazing organization, being able to, to match rescue dogs with veterans who really are in need of it. Falling short didn't stop any tales from Wagner. The real win was raising money for those still fighting. For Courier Buzz, I'm CJ Rosenstein. And that's what's happening here in the District 502 community. For the latest in college news and events, be sure to check out this week's edition of The Courier Newspaper, available now on newsstands. You can also follow us on Facebook and our YouTube page at Courier TV and our website, codcourier.org. And that's your Courier Buzz. I'm Farrah Moore.